Welcome to the Welcome to My Roost project. Um, this is a really kind of an amazing little project. Even if you don't like chickens um, or roosters or whatever, um, this project will show you so many things. This project brings almost the last year and a half or two years worth of mediums all together into one project. So I've got chalky paint finish um, in the background with a crackle technique, some streaking and all that kind of stuff. So it's a great background, learn how to use your chalky paints kind of video as well as crackle mediums. Then we come into our lettering. The lettering is all done with the chalk pencils and it's even shaded with the chalk pencils and you'll learn how to use those IPC brushes and see what what's up with those. So there's a great video lesson just right there. And then this is amazing, miraculously, awesomely terrific. It is a stenciled chicken. So we start out with our layers and we just work in our little layers and if you look at it, it sure doesn't look like a stencil chicken. So you're going to see how to use layered stencils as, um, as masks and you'll see how to use and the other piece is the new media paints. So we've got the media paints. I have used probably about 10 of the colors to do the glazing and the highlighting through the mask that is the stencil and it, it's super easy. It is super, super simple. The colors layer, it's so, it's so cool because this is watermelon which is this brilliant, brilliant color right here and it's just got a little dry rubbed of a um, one of the russet colors and then a little burnt umber and it just tones it down. So these colors layer on top of each other really nicely. Um, I think that you're going to love the lesson. It is, it's different than anything I've done in a really long time, but then everything that we've been seeing with the chalk, with the chalky paint, and then with the media paints and um, layered stencils is brand new to all of us. So I think that you're going to enjoy this lesson. The first thing we're going to do is get our surface sealed and based. I am using, let's see, this is Heirloom, or no, Heritage. Huh can't decide which name, it must be Heirloom. Heirloom Chalky Paint and All Purpose Sealer together. And I'll just go ahead and get to the edges and get it sealed all at once. And then I'll seal the backside too so that I don't have any chance of moisture getting in there. Okay, we're gonna add Crackle Medium. So I wanna bring the Crackle Medium in from my edges, but I wanna do it kind of randomly, not super duper even, okay? And you wanna put your Crackle Medium on really, um, really, really um, flat. You don't need it to be super chunky. This is where I want a lot of my detail is on the edges. So I'll just go ahead and put this here and then we'll go ahead and put, mm, I'm going to put a little bit of smeared asphaltum here and there. So we'll have some and some, rinse out, and continue onward with crackle medium. I'm going to put some where things are vanilla colored or the, the tan, and then I'll put some on the, the brown when it dries. And then when you're applying your paint, you can choose to have um, thick paint or thick, thin paint, and your cracks will um, go according to how thick or thin you put your paint on. So I'll show you that as well. Okay, so we've got a little bit of crackle medium on our brown, a little bit on our tan, and now we're going to go in with a mix of Enchanted with Vintage together about one to one and then I've got a pile of Enchanted and a pile of Vintage and a lighter pile um, of color and I'm probably going to need a little bit more of this. Okay, so what I want to do is create the very thickest, heaviest crackles. Okay, so I'm just going to go over that. Yeah, we're definitely going to need more. Lots more. Okay, we'll just go where things are going to be the crackliest. And once you get in there, you've got to get out. So you can't play around in crackle medium. Okay. When it's dry, we can go back in 
and we can um, dry brush over the top. I don't care if they're not mixed very well. So, and notice my brush is like laying down. It's not straight up and down. Okay, we should get some lovely big cracks. I'm doing this upside down. My hole should be at the top. Okay. And now we put it away and let it crack. Okay, my crackle is dry, so now I'm going to apply um, asphaltum here and there are my edges, drawing it in. We want to kind of rustic this thing up just a little bit. Kind of don't want it every exact place, so I'm trying to be just a little bit random. See how that's giving me compare the two edges. So that is already looking just a little bit aged and worn. We can go in and really just bring that down just a little bit more for extra age and wornness. So we won't have it everywhere, but it will definitely add to the appearance of being old, old, old wood. Okay, now we're going to just take just a little bit of that same color, a little bit of water, and we'll just kind of streak it in over the piece just to give that irregular kind of look to it. And then we'll go into the, just the blue, and I'm going to dry that off and give it just a little bit of streaks and cracks in the middle. You can dry that off, back it off with your paper towel if you get it too far gone. Okay, I think it's looking pretty, pretty root and toot and tattered and old. And probably go into a little bit of the dark green and kind of do the same thing. Kind of the idea is you don't want to be able to see where one thing left off and the other thing began. If you get it too strong, just fade it out. This would be an awesome faux finish for a piece of furniture. Okay, so these two things look like little eyeballs here. That's definitely too much. My paint sat down and it didn't go anywhere. All right, I like it. Okay, we're going to do the letters with chalk. So I'm going to use the um, chalk pencil. And I've got something stuck under something. There we go. Yep. What are you? Aha! Paint goober. Okay. So I'm just going to fill in my letters with chalk. So much easier than lots of other ways to do it. And what's going to be neat about this is you're really going to get a kind of soft, old, aged patina. Okay, so you want to do your skinny areas first, so go through and look for those. Um, and then sharpen your pencil or, you know, do the skinny and then use the fat to do the fat areas. Or just keep resharpening your pencil. Okay, now I've got it all um, the color that I want it. So now what I want to do is I want to use one of the two of these. This is a Deerfoot um, brush, and this is a really super soft little, um, I don't even know what you call it. They call it a large flat blend. So what I can do is I can either scumble like that, or I can brush to fade my letters and give them that kind of chalky look. 
Okay, and then I can also, if I want to, if I don't like the bridging, I can go in and I can connect my bridging so that it doesn't look like I stenciled it. Super easy. Although the bridging on our stencils is usually so good that it doesn't bother me. So you can decide. Okay, so then we go through and we soften. And then I'll kind of give it a chalk faded fuzzy kind of look. And every now and again wipe off your brush so that you don't just spread chalk dust around. And now what you do is when you get done, you spray it with Krylon Matte Fixative, and that will make it stay so that you can continue to paint over the top of it. Okay, and then now you might ask, what do we do about the, the fuzzies? If we don't like the fuzzies, you simply wet your brush, and you go in. This is a point blend. And you go in with that pointy, pointy end, and you just clean off anything you don't like, you take away, and you can put it back. And that's what's really cool about the chalk paint, is you're not committed to it until you actually get it done. So that is how we're going to get the lettering. All right, we're going to go in with two colors. We've got ultramarine and the gray, the charcoal gray. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our drop shading. Okay, and I'm going to keep my hands out of this. The way I'm going to keep my hands out of this is grab a bridge. I have two of them that I keep handy. And the bridge is going to keep my arms from dragging across my project. And I can rotate this under, and it's crystal clear so I can see through and see where I'm at. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to color next to my lettering, kind of fat, with my blue. And then right next to the white, I'm going to give it a dark line. Okay, and that's going to be my drop shading. Okay, once you get your colors layered, you can go in with this little um, small foam detailer, and you can just smudge. It's got a little point on it. It's just going to give it that dreamy little look. It blends the two colors together. You can draw it out just a little bit, so it's almost like painting. You're floating without, floating without water. Okay, and this is the difference that it looks like on the bottom. It's kind of crisp and all that. And then up here, see how it's soft and fuzzy. Okay, so let's see if we can get them on there together. Okay, I think this one looks much more deep, much more chalky. It just settles in really nicely. So to clean your little uh, mop brush, you can clean it with water when you're done, but you can also just blot it off on a paper towel to make it not be too, too messy. This is really, really a fun way to do your words because it, um, I think it's taken me, oh, I don't know, maybe about 10 minutes. I still haven't got them locked down, so if I change my mind, I don't have to, um, you know, make a strong decision until I see if I really like the colors and all that. It wouldn't take me a minute to change it back. I could just wipe it off with a sponge. So if you like to, like to do some um, messing about with your colors, this is a good way, a good forgiving way to paint. And don't forget, painting is just applying color. You don't actually have to have liquid. You can do a chalk, a chalk painting art. I think this project is really interesting because I've gone from um, the chalk paint, the chalky paint, to the chalk of the chalkboard type stuff to mediums, um, I'm going to bust out media paints um, for glazing because they're magic. And I'm going to have my regular acrylics, so I've got pencil and all the things, and I'm not trying to be weird, but they just go so well together that they've, they've kind of all merged. So I think it's truly a new, a new generation of painting. And this isn't just trying to be trendy, this is just like, holy crap, this stuff is cool. So. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. It's been a while since we've needed some kind of fresh blood and stuff to get us excited in our painting world, I think. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take my Krylon Mist It, and when you mist, 
what you want to do is you want to mist, okay, so say this is the, the paint can and you've got it straight up. You want the, the spray to just mist over the top. You don't want to point it at it like a gun. So you just want to mist over and let it land on your piece because you don't want to cake it, okay? And then you can do a little test and see if you can rub off and that kind of thing, make sure you, you are sealed down. It takes just seconds to dry, so you're not going to have to wait um, a long time. Do make sure to do it in um, a well-ventilated area. You do not want to be breathing um, the fixative. So do it outside or in a garage or something like that with the windows and doors open. Okay, so now I'm just adding little bits of extra smudges here and there. So now I'm painting with my, um, you know, just my, my blending stump, really. Oh, I wanted to do one more thing before. I had a color. Oh, yeah, this color right here. This is cobalt blue. And I wanted to have just some crinkles of cobalt blue here and there. So I'm just going to scribble across. Now what we're going to do when we get done with the scribbling is we're going to soften. Okay, and that's going to give us some of our background technique. But in a real subtle way that just adds just some magic and mystery. Now I'm going to have a big fat chicken in here so I don't need to do too much over here. But this is just going to layer nicely with my antiquing. But I can do it in streaks. going to be scratchy. It's going to add just the right amount. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'm sharpen my pencil while I'm at it. So do you see how that's just adding just a hair of something, something? Super easy to adjust. If you don't like what you did, just take, you know, your finger and lick it and get rid of it. So you know mistake is permanent until you spray. And even then we can probably figure out how to reverse stuff. Okay. I think that gets us to kind of a, a little bit of a Tina stage. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and hit the spray can. Okay, so for the colors, I'm choosing to do kind of a traditional um, rooster kind of colors. But you could certainly do these in colors to make this into a um, white and black rooster. You could do it as the barnyard brown and reds kind of thing. You could do it into a magical zentangle rooster. You could do whatever you wanted to. So don't be structuring this. This is just to show you how to use the stencils. This isn't um, to tell you that this rooster has to be the colors I make it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our colonial green. And I'm just going to go ahead and just dry rub into my stencil. Okay, and I have an image. I put pinned just a whole ton of chickens and roosters. And I've got one that um, the colors just make me really happy. So I'm using him as a, as a structure. Now, we need, you don't almost need to do this base, but it tells you where the stencils line up when you get into the tail feathers and all that kind of stuff. And what I've noticed about roosters is when you get into tail feathers and all those things, people just really get stressed out. So that's what gave us the idea to come up with a stencil is so that we could take the stress out of um, painting chickens, roosters, birds, that kind of thing. So we have same thing for butterflies. We have multi-layer stencils for butterflies and um, songbirds and all kinds of things that are just kind of generally frustrating for people. So we're trying to make this easy. And it also makes it so that you can do some kind of magical techniques, which I love. 
Okay, and I'm trying not to leave big strong ridges places. And then when we get up to the top and change brushes and we'll go into milk chocolate and this way we just have a little undercoat of a brownish reddish kind of thing but we have our lines up there I've got a smaller brush for this these are the dome brushes and they are wonderful very affordable and very forgiving as well. And I think I'll go ahead and get his feet done with an initial coat of this dark. I might gray these little feet up. I can't decide yet. Once again, I'll do this on the fly. I'll be designing it as I'm um, as I'm walking through this the process. Now, while I have my brush dirty, I'm going to go into Hauser Dark Green, and I'm actually going to neutralize this brush because that is, I had a lot of paint in there. Wow. And then what we get to do is we get to go ahead and shade our chicken along the edges can strengthen it using the stencil as a mask so there's none of that floating. This is a really forgiving project for a class. Um, you could have people doing advanced techniques and beginner techniques or just doing you know whatever technique you want them to. Just kind of deepen that. All right, and that gives us a center area. I'm going to take a curved flat brush and I'm going to go into sea glass and then I want to make some, make sure my stencil is lined up. Okay, I'm going to go into my, um, let's see how far down my hackles come. Do, 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 do. Pretty far down. Okay, so I can give myself a little Ghost Rider line. This is what this is brilliant for. When you need a temporary line, it will show you um, where things come down to, but you can erase it. So with spit or water or whatever you want. Okay, so then I want to go ahead and put some, just some little um, feather kind of shapes in there. So I'm just kind of scribbling some little V strokes. And I'm going to use this as kind of a grisaille technique. There's going to be a big old wing over here. So it gets smaller and smaller as we get down there. So these are just our little speckles. Okay, and we can have a couple of little speckle type things down here, just a little bit. Not as strong probably. add interest. Okay, so I'm playing with some colors here. Now I'm going into, I'm going to get this brush in the water, going into my media paints because they glaze so sheer, there's no filler in them, so they're, they're going to be the color that you want them to be, but over other colors. It makes for a really cool layered um, painting. So I'm going to use my little flat brush, brush here, and first I'm going to use Viridian Green. Okay, what I, what I want to do with the Viridian Green is I want to establish some deeper, darker greens throughout the piece. We could cinch right on up to where his comb is going to come over, or his hackles, or whatever we want to call these parts. I don't know my chicken body parts. And we can blend that out. So see, what we're doing here is we're just kind of placing color instead of like worrying about floating and, and doing all kinds of um, magical techniques. So we're just placing. I'm going to use a little bit of water to blend that down. Oops, I don't want to pull it. Okay. And now I'm going to go into a little bit more of that color. We're going to go and just deepen the body. And down onto the leg. I'm holding my stencil down so I don't shoot things underneath. You just need just the littlest hair of these colors, and they go a long, 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 long way. So don't be afraid to put out just a little bit at a time. Try to go shape following. If you know that the breast is curved, you know, towards his leg, then go ahead and do the shape following that way. 
And when we're coming off the tail, which we'll do now as well, whoops, hi, strong thing. Then what we're going to do, still strong thing. So it catches a little bit on the, the crackle, so watch for that. And so on the tail, we'll just go ahead and round that down. You know we're going to want some chicken shapes. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and wet and blend. And we're going to have a layer over the top of this as well. Okay, now I'm going to try a few of these other colors. I've got Payne's Gray and a Prussian Blue. Ooh, Prussian Blue is really pretty. It's got to be really strong. So I'm going to tuck that in where I would want some really strong color, like, for example, the tips of his back feathers. So where those feathers end, I'll go ahead and bring those in. Okay, so we might want just a little bit more. On his back leg. We'll set that puppy back there a little bit. I think he has a leg. Um, is he a leg one? Yeah, he's got a little bit of a leg thing going on, so maybe I'll leave that alone. A lot of this is taken care of in the stencils, which is awesome. And I think we need to go with some kind of a little bit bright green as well. Let's be get into a little bit of yellow green. Gold, green gold is what this is called. Just to add a little bit of jazz and magic. I don't want him to fade away to nothing. He is a rooster. Okay, so we'll go in and just add a little bit of that. Okay, so when I've got my layer number, I've got it reversed, layer number two on there, I'm going to go into Indian Turquoise. I'm going to dry scumble, dry rub. I don't want this to end up being like some kind of like, oh, hey, you had a stencil lady made a chicken and all that kind of stuff. I want this to be a little bit more natural looking, so when you dry rub, into a stencil, it tends to pick up um, a more natural look and it'll allow all my crackle and stuff to show through. So I'm just gonna. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm doing these um, tail feathers in this light color because I'm going to, I intend to glaze them. And they don't have to be solid, they can be variegated and show the background through whatever I want. Okay, I'll let that dry for just a minute and then we'll do a little glazing. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and take Burnt Sienna and I wanna do his lower wing here. With burnt Sienna. And we'll let that dry. I'm gonna go ahead and do his feet with um, milk chocolate. Just rest my brush and I'll go back up to the tail. Let's see, what do I want to do with the tail? Okay, I think we're going to go into Thalo Turquoise. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and glaze a little bit of Thalo Turquoise. Now we'll go next door into um, Prussian blue. Bring up from the bottom. I'm going to want a damp brush for this. So I'm going to go ahead and wet a crescent brush. And I have got the stiffest 
Crescent brush. Here we go. So I want the paints to move just a little bit more than they are. And a little bit of water. I think I'll go ahead and put some water on my palette too. Oops. Put water all over my palette. It shall be okay. There we go. A little too much, but that's okay. The dark's on the back. those in. Okay, and then we can take a little sneak peek and see what we think of what's going on. And I'm going to need to do something with the, watch what we can do. This is kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Now see how these are bright green underneath? So I can go backwards and I can lay this over here and get lined up. Okay, and I can go in with a little, you know, something that makes me kind of happy, like um, the Viridian Green, which I had already used, but now I know where my other feathers are going to go, so I can just go and deepen these guys. Just come right back on top. Okay, so see how that joins everything together just a little bit better. All right. Get the tape back down so I know what I'm doing. All right, we're going to go with a float and a float and a float and just go ahead and give him some wing tips. I'm using that as a mask and I'm using honey brown. And then we can do the same thing with our little bit of honey brown in his leg. I'm just kind of floating within it, but I'm just sort of glazing. A dab here, a little dab there. Okay, and I need a little bit more something, something going on over here. So we need some more color. Mine is dried. I had to take a trip into town. All right, so now we need to bring a little bit of this green in here to make this a little bit more peacock looking. These colors are so delicious. So, so, so delicious. This is what we've been needing forever. Um, you know, we've got paints that are okay but they just had fillers in them and you couldn't really see the color. Um, these are, you know, the, the real deal and they are glorious. And so we've got a beautiful little tail feather kind of thing going. I think we'll halt it right there and then let's go ahead and pull out, let's see which one of you guys, I think the transparent red iron oxide. Let's go ahead and do some glazing. Oh, that's a really pretty color. Can you see that? See how orange that is? Beautiful. Rich, rich, rich. I'm going to need something redder, but that is a wonderful color. Okay, so I need something a little bit. I've got a Lazy Susan over here. Let me see if I can share that with you. I just didn't want these paints to be put away. So I've got a Lazy Susan here. It has one, two, three tiers, and all of my paints are on them, and um, and I can just choose, you know, whichever colors I need. And since there's a limited amount, that means that um, that I can, um, you know, just easily reach over and take the one I want instead of having like 300 to choose from. Okay, I'm going to use watermelon slice for the comb. And that's a new paint from Decorart. A lot of new paints from Decorart, huh? And basically, what I don't know if you've caught on to this yet, but what I'm doing is I am 
um, base coating with my highlight colors. So, um, or at least my second to last highlight colors. And what that's going to do for me is that allows me to use the media paints to glaze over. And by the way, um, these are not, these say that, you know, they're fluid acrylics and they say that they're paints or whatever. I personally am using them as a medium or as something that glazes instead of as a paint because this would never base coat something, um, but it would certainly glaze over a base coat in another brand or color. Um, so I'm using them more like a medium instead of like a paint, and I think that's what makes them magical. Okay, so then our wing gets to be the same color as the other part of our wing, and so we're going to go into the burnt sienna and scumble around. I'll let that dry and I'll repeat. Okay, I'm going to go into the red iron oxide, the transparent red iron oxide, and I'm going to go over this comb, but not to the, not all the way to the middle. I want that to be my um, my highlight area. So I'll take a peek at that. Yeah, it warms it up just a little bit. Gives me some neat highlights. And we'll see what we're going to do next. This is kind of fun. I haven't had a challenge like this in a while because it's just everything is all these new products and all these new, new wonderful things. So it is definitely a lot of, a lot of new. Okay, so now we're going to give ourselves some feathers. So I'm just going to chop in with a little bit. Actually, I think I'm going to go up one and go into um, do 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 do. Okay, we got milk chocolate. We got honey brown. Okay, so it must be the honey brown. Just give it some fluffy little feathers. I think I'll go ahead and remove that. You can always go back to that layer if you want to. Okay. Love these colors. Okay, yeah, I think that comb is going to look really nice just like that. We'll go next. This is going to be layer four. And we want to make sure we're dry before we start dragging things around. Now notice that if we've done this right, everything overlaps the thing underneath it. For example, here there is a line from the stencil bridging, but because this is done well, it overlaps so that when you put this color on top, it will not be, you won't be able to see the color below. You won't leave a bridge, if you will. Okay, so now we'll go into our darker colors, our thalo, and we'll just go ahead and give that, this is his back leg, so let's just make that be his back leg with some thalo, and then let's go into a little bit of Payne's Gray, if I can burp it out. Come on, little guy. And we'll shade that. new. Okay, go into Payne's Gray and just shade right next to the look. Okay, so we're going to go into some fresh Indian turquoise because mine is drowned in water. Okay, and then we're going to dry rub over the top. turquoise. Dry rubbing saves the, the texture of the, if you just stippled, then you would be getting um, a base coat and it would go into your crackle medium and stuff and this way we preserve the cracks 
which adds texture and awesomeness to the background. Okay, then on these lovely little wing tips, let's go ahead and give them just a little bit of the Indian turquoise in front, and let's go back into a little bit of our colonial green up top. And I think while our brush is wet, well, actually what I think I'll do is I'll switch into the, um, the Viridian Green one that I was using. And we'll get a little bit more thalo turquoise out. I've used it. I'm kind of using this brush just like dirty. So I'm not worrying about whether or not it's clean or not. Ooh, yeah, we need a new paper towel. Okay, so I didn't want that to happen. So we want to just preserve a little bit of the highlights and give ourselves just a little bit of the... Um, I think I'm going to have to... Actually, I think I'm going to have to reverse this. Let's go backwards a step. And... Aha! I see what I've done. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go into Payne's Gray in this wing area because it wouldn't be highlighted with a darker, uh, with a lighter um, effect underneath. So we need that underneath wing area to be dark. So I'll just go ahead and scumble to base. And then I'll put the other one back on and highlight. Okay, now I'm going to go into Viridian Green. I'm going to flip my paper towel over so I can find a clean spot. Boy, just pick up just ever so much of this color. It is so potent and powerful. Okay, and I think maybe our Verdian Green and a little bit of our um, Green Gold. Mixed together. And that's just going to give us that bottle green kind of color. Now I'm just putting highlights of that up the middle. Sprinkle a little bit here and there, and now I can go into our Thalo turquoise and just suck in the bases of the tail feathers. need to go back into our highlight color and just really kind of highlight it in. using my wonderful Lazy Susan. You guys, this is so cool. These paints are amazing. I could just go on and on, and I know I am. I'm getting out um, Indian turquoise. But um, there is not very many things in my painterly life that have given me as much happiness as these silly paints. So um, I'm going to get a little bit of the um, dioxazine going here. Just a little kind of a glaze in the wing. And I think on his tail feathers too. Not everywhere, but somewheres. Okay, let's take this off and see what we've got. We're going to start telling the story here pretty quick. Okay, so we've got lovely um, feathers that go up in the air. We're going to need to do some liner work to, to give them the rest of their body. This doesn't have enough... Um, highlight on it for me. So what we're going to do is we're just going to flip it over. Oop, too strong. Let's give it um, phthalo blue, no, phthalo turquoise, and my Indian turquoise. And let's just go ahead and give some little feathers. out. 
And then we can use our short bright brush. And we can go in, let's see, how do I want to approach this? You can reach out over things and bring some sections of feather out and then they can be glazed down. So you can create extra, extra sections, if you will. And we'll do some with our, um, with our liner brush as well. Kind of fun, huh? Tell you what, tail feathers have never been that easy. Okay, so we still have some work to do on our body. So we have definitely on our breast, we've got just a little bit of, you know, just, it's just, hey, hi, I'm green. So let's do a little of the Indian turquoise on there. A little bit on our leg. This is gonna be our saddle feathers here. And let's get a little bit of that green gold go on again. Maybe a little bit of that in these feathers. Spread that love around. Okay, and then we're gonna go into, let's go, Let's go Thalo Turquoise, which is my new favoritest, favoritest ever color. And let's shade, ooh, hi. Let's shade with a little bit more control than that. And just come right up underneath our wing. And right up to where our neck feathers will come. And then we smooth out and we can bring it down. Pardon my head being in the way. So see how I can glaze that right over that green and it becomes just a totally different color green, but it doesn't stop being green. That's what's cool. Magic, 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 magic. And next into uh, Payne's Gray. And we repeat. And that looks like it's gonna do the same thing I just did. Just be a little bit out of control. I can repeat where I think it needs to be stronger. Okay, we're gonna take some honey brown and we're going to get a base on his neck feathers. Okay, and we'll wait for that to dry. All right, so we're gonna take our, I think I'm gonna move into this, I've still got a brush that's wet. This is gonna be uh, transparent red iron oxide. Okay, and we're gonna dry rub out from his head, and draw that color down. Kinda got a little orange hue to it. And I, dry rubbed onto a piece of paper towel that has a little bit of water in it so that I can get a little bit more like a glaze kind of effect. Like I said, I'm really using these as glazes more than anything. And then let's just go ahead and kiss a little bit here and a little bit there with that color. And now we'll go into Burnt Umber in the media paint and we'll darken up at the top. give it a little bit of a feathery kind of texture. And now we need something bright. And just FYI, our pop tops, this one's the one that I painted in a blue delft, work really well on breaking the seals on the media paints. It tears a little thing in it, and then you can just take it off. 
so it works on them as well it works on all the paints very very helpful okay so now let's go see what we can make happen with yellow oxide I'm thinking I'm gonna need another oh that's nice okay all right I stand corrected I didn't think that would show up because of the transparency but I definitely stand corrected okay so we want it kind of strong and a little bit streaky so I'm just using the edge of my brush and that is way too much paint however I will make it work Okay, so notice what I'm doing. I'm going back and forth over the paints. The yellow is going over that dark burnt, um, burnt umber and the, the red, and it's not, it's not like covering it, but it's making it into just another color. I'm telling you what, this is pretty darn root and tootin'. Awesome. And now I'm going to go into... Day, yep. D-I-A-R-Y-L-I-D-E, Darylide, -E, Dare something like that, to see if I can't get just a little bit of like razzle-dazzle out of it. So let's, let's see what kind of razzle I can get. It's just got a little bit of kind of warmth. I'm going to have to come back in the bottom with a little bit of that Quinn with the, the transparent um, raw umber. So now I'll glaze into those colors. And I'm doing that a little bit dry. Let's take a peek. Looking pretty good. like it. Now, like I said at the end, that's where we'll go ahead and make all of our um, crazy stuff happen when we use our little liner brush and just give the details. Okay. Yeah, that's just lovely. Alright, let's get some saddle feathers going. Saddle feathers are going to be the same basic effect as those. lined up here. Okay, so see what's happening here is this line right here comes over this line and that way it doesn't look stenciled because if this met that it would look very stenciled. So this way we have it so that you can do something that is a stencil but the layers overlap each other and you don't have that um, matchy matchy kind of looking thing. Alright, so now I've got that color on. I'm going to take my transparent, I keep forgetting, red iron oxide. And I'm going to bring that down. Probably use a bigger brush. Bring that down to the lower area. And I love that, you know, the line follows just where the tail feathers drop, so it makes it a really natural way to to line up and make sure that your strokes are going in that direction. So this is not really stenciling a rooster more than it is um, using masks to paint a rooster. And I've got to say it is a lot of fun to do my shading and highlighting wet and wet, um, sort of wet and wet, glazing, um, just it's really quite um, non-threatening if you will. It's like you can just do it. You don't have to think about it. It's not hard. I'm liking it. These paints, I don't know if you're noticing, it's really hard for, you know, if you were here and I could put these into your hand, it would be much easier. But they don't, they, they slide around a little bit, but they don't slide badly. Like they're not sliding off. They just slide into the area that you seem to, I know, I know, I love the paints. You get it already. But I'm telling, I'm trying to tell you how they act. So, um, but yeah, they seem to slide into the area you want them, but they don't slide off the area you put them, unless you want them to, which is also good. Alright, now we're going to use that lovely magical yellow oxide color. 
and we're going to go from the bottom up. And I'm using this dry brush because I want to see some scratchy stuff. Dry brush means that you can see the brush strokes. It means that you can see the individual striated scratchiness. I haven't even used these paints yet as like thinned with liner, you know, thinned and used as liner brush. That'll be interesting to see. Look at how that is. It just shades right underneath there. Now the only thing that I did mess up is I didn't trace over here and so I have to get some shading going right there because I don't have enough. But that's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. All right, we're gonna, I've got my um, mask back on for my comb and the wattle. And I'm gonna go into um, the transparent Red Iron Oxide one more time. Just kind of scumble in to the areas. Turn the side of his head needs to be... I'm gonna do it. it. Gets a little bit of shading on his head. And then we're gonna go into the Burnt Umber to knock that baby back. It's just a little bit red right now. That's much nicer. It's almost self-highlighting. Okay. This is so cool. Love, 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 love. Someplace I have an eyeball on a stencil, I thought. Yep, over here. Okay, and so we'll put our beak on. And we'll do our eyeball. You know what I'm gonna do with the eyeball is I'm gonna go ahead and base it in the umber color. And then we'll give it a little bit of a um, the black eye, and then do do some um, highlighting on that. So let's go into the yellow oxide with my honey brown, and do my beak. And I think I won't want to give it too much of a. And then we'll go with our flat. I'm looking at his eye right now and it looks like his eye is in the middle of his head and I see that I want this to be shaded. And then this to be shaded. Yeah. And then we'll go in with little bit. Let me get my black. Okay, we've given him just a little black circle and now we will give him the shine in his eye. That makes him a live bird. And let's go ahead and give him, with just a round brush, let's give his beak a little bit of a highlight on top. And we'll go into the umber and pull just a little bit the umber out like he's shaded. And a little bit of shadow there. So anything that shadows or doesn't quite line up or you slid, just go ahead and touch it up. Okay, now we're going to go through and strengthen some things. I'm going to get burnt umber and I'm going to float that on the back of his saddle feathers and just walk that down and get a little bit more drama going here and we'll do the same thing underneath his wing 
feathers and over here by where his saddle feathers drop down. Let's get some depth. Just kind of round that out just a little bit. And then the same thing over here. a little stiff and then I'll come up here oh hi it also has a little bit of a line somebody's water is getting dirty let's do his legs as well what we'll accent those and then I've got to get so I don't have a shine shade underneath all this stuff. And draw it down. And I think we could probably go, oops, now I've shaded with two sides of my brush. And that's not going to work. Maybe somebody's water wasn't dirty and somebody's brush was just turned the wrong way. So now we're going to go over here and increase the strength of the drama right there. Same thing here. Okay, now into, let's see, let's go to Payne's Gray. And with Payne's Gray, what we want to do is we want to anchor all of the places where the feathers come out. Okay, so we want to bring that down in. Anywhere where our tail feathers are zooming and booming. And this is just going to help everything settle in nice and awesomely. And we can just kind of trail along the feathers just to outline them just a little bit. So you can see where they are. And then we go in with a little bit of, I'm in blue right now, but I think we're going to end up switching and getting into some green. Got a little teeny bit of, or I didn't get it quite close enough to the edge. Alright, now let's go into birdie and, and get some green in that tail. my green gold. That just makes it just magic, 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 magic. Together. And now we'll go into the dioxazine. And with the diox, I want to make sure that I kind of really um, glaze it out. It's a strong color. I want kisses of it. I don't want it to take over. And I don't want it dry brush looking. Okay, that maybe just a little bit more purple in the front area as well. Just carry our colors around. Okay, now I'm going to get out my Raphael liner. This is where you're going to want a liner that will do magic things for you. I'm going to thin my Indian turquoise with um, watch out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just come off back ends. We're going to give them some fluffy feathers. Yeah. 
don't bend it too much. It's got to look like a natural, natural little tail. It just gives him some shazza. And maybe we can mix in with a little bit of our diox. Woo! And that's going to make like a violet kind of color. Or down here. Nope, a little bit more of our turquoise. We need to have just a little bit more. And then we can go into our phthalo color, which is like gone. Oop, that's purple. You can tell when the end of the project happens because everything is a disaster. So we get more phthalo turquoise. I want to just paint a room of my house this color. I love this color. Look at how pretty that is. It's just a gotcha there. So rich. It's like a blue, but a turquoise. And we'll go into our white and we'll make a bit more water. A little bit more white. We can go into the front and we can give these guys just a little bit more pin feather looks. Now we go into the yellows. Okay, next we're going to take some burnt umber, thinned. And we're going to give some definition to our saddle feathers. And then we'll do the same thing up here with our neck feathers. Let some escape the boundaries. Oops, don't go straight down. It's got to be shape following. And we can do the same thing in little wing areas. And that'll just give them some definition and then you can press down with your Raphael and you can make it kind of self-shading. Like it. So same thing up here. So I've got some wispy ones now but we'll put in some dark ones. Thinned yellow oxide. See how strong this comes out. That was so surprising to me. Okay, so we'll do kind of chubby pushing strokes. I don't want to end it on a fine note here because I want it to be to just kind of make new feather marks. And 
later. Don't smear as you're painting. There you go. Okay, now up here, what we want to do is start a fade. So I'm going to mix just a little bit of my umber in with that, and I'll start doing a little weave. Those of you who get your hair color will know exactly what I'm talking about. And start weaving that in. And those of you who don't get your hair colored, I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Just a couple up here. Oh. Looking pretty darn root and toot and fabulous, I think. I think just a little bit of our Indian turquoise, and we need to shade our um, veins or line our veins. And some of these feathers. just a little highlight of the yellow oxide as a glaze to his little footsie. And notice it just glazes right over. It doesn't cover over that burnt umber. And I think maybe just a little kiss of oxide on his wingtips. Just a touch so they're not lonely. You probably could put a little bit of yellow in here and there. And there's a little bit of yellow coming out here. Okay, we know what time it is, right? This is the time when we start carrying our colors around, apparently. It always sneaks up on me. I'm never aware that it's about to happen, but when it starts, it's just like unleashing something. Okay, so I want to bring a little bit of yellow into my background here and there. I don't want it to be screaming, but I'm just tickling in a little bit of that yellow oxide color. I think we could go in with, let's see, we need probably just a teeny bit of red something or another, so let's pick up um, the transparent um, umber and let's Let's, 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 let's put him with an anchor line. And then let's glaze that. So let's walk it down. And then we could go in with just a teeny bit of the umber, the burnt umber. And we'll put that under where his feet are standing. A little cast shadow kind of effect. A nice little anchor. Now let's give it a little bit of burnt umber on the edges. We've got that. We'll walk that in just a little bit. Let's just age that, crack, deepen it. And 
let's go ahead and just walk that color down a little bit. Grubby up a little bit. And I think we could go in with just a little bit more of our Indian turquoise. I think we have a bird. Okay, a lot of times what I do is I take a picture with my camera. Okay, get my little camera out and I'll take a picture and when I do this I get like a distance view of my project and what I'm seeing is I'm seeing that this is very bright and then this is very pale and I'm not seeing any of those colors kind of in there. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my um, phthalo and I'm going to wash it down nice and strongly and then I'm going to wash in in a deeper area of the piece with just a little bit of that blue color to kind of bring that color in and down from the top not everywhere but just to kind of frame it just a little bit more than it was Okay, so see how that's already doing it on that side? It's really bringing that color around. Stay out of my letters. Just adds just a tint, tint, tint of color. Stay out of my letters. And I think just a little bit more on the very tippy top. Stay out of my letters. And I think one more, which is going to be a little bit of the gold green. And this is a screaming color, so we want to be so careful with this. Just to really just hint. Okay, yeah, that's a hint enough. Just ever so softly, and I need to soften that way, 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 way down. Okay, I think that's a little less lonely. Okay, if you want to make the tail feathers be iridescent, and in this case I'm not going to at this point, they make, and I've got a purple one up there someplace, they make these interference mediums, and let me let me show you how they work, and I'll just take it and put it on there. It messes with my um, photography if I put it on before I paint, so I can talk about it, but I'm not going to do so good about it. Um, so what happens is you can go ahead and you can put it on, and it just dries very transparent. On dark colors you can see it, and on light colors you can't. So if you put it on over your um, turquoise areas, then it'll be turquoise. If you put it over green, it'll be green. You can do the gold, you can do all of that. It is magic. Magic, magic, magic. 